Welcome back to Sitar Gurukul. In today's lesson, I'm going to discuss another uh, topic of me. Every time I discuss anything regarding me, I get very reminiscent of the times uh, that my Gurujis uh, taught me. It was very fascinating for me that the ability to bend, break free to create music and my Gurujis did it beautifully. Today I am going to show you yet another uh, episode, uh, addition uh, to the Mir technique that we have recently started to learn. We have learned one fret Mir, today we are going to learn two fret Mir. I personally try to take four fret Mirs but I have seen my Gurus and great sitar players all over the world taking up to five frets in Mirs. Let's hope we get to that one day. Today, the exercise that I'm going to show you is nothing out of the ordinary, nothing that you have not already figured out. If you have started to play Mirs and also if you have watched the episode that discussed Mirs uh, just a few episodes ago. So you were doing, you're trying to figure out sa re sa re re ga re ga now we are going to do the same thing only this time we are going to do sa re ga we are going to try and figure out re ga ma so you get the general idea you don't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be timed it just has to be a leisurely pra practice for one of those days where you just don't you feel like the sitar is just lying around there somewhere and you try to pick it up and you have to play something it is very important that you have a specific routine for your practice but without that I also recommend something that I often do I uh, work and I have my sitar laying around somewhere around me and I grab the sitar and take a simple break and I practice certain stuff that I have in my mind of course as you grow much mature with the sitar those practices are going to be much more difficult and much more um, advanced. So without further ado, I'm going to start and try to teach you how to take two fret meals. One last pointer before I start, and I keep on saying that I cannot stretch this enough, the importance of it, is the hand position. So it's very important that you have at least a two finger gap, meaning two of your fingers should fit uh, kind of tightly in the space that you have allowed the space that you have made between the fretboard and the skin of your thumb over here because this is going to give you that leverage that you need and the second pointer is since you have started to learn meals it's very important that you understand that it's the elbow and the wrist that's moving even though it might seem like every player is doing it through their hands they're actually not so it's very very important that you keep that in mind that you need to be able to see your thumb twist and you also need to be able to see that your uh, fingers are kind of stationary on their position uh, kind of like this it's not doing this so it's going to hold it right there and your hand is going to move like this that's the best way to get the meals done in least minimum effort we have to find out, first we play the chikari, and that's for reference, and uh, I, I suppose that you can tune your instruments much better now. For those who, of you who haven't um, uh, watched our tuning uh, video lesson, I suggest that you go back to lesson 2 and watch uh, as I show how to tune this part. So, this is our tankura on board tankura, it's our guide, and it's going to tell us if we are in tune. So, we take first sade. So, satisfactory re then you do a ga from that re and then you come back you keep on holding that ga and then you come back to re and then you come back to sa Likewise, you do the same for Re. You start from Re, go to Ga, and you, if you feel like that this Ga is better, or at least 
uh, satisfactory, only then you start from guy and go to ma. It might hurt your middle finger a bit, but bear with me, that pain is going to go away only if you let that pain sustain. So, Re Ga Ma. same from ga but over here what i would really uh, very importantly recommend is that after re your spaces in between the frets is going to become smaller as you go up higher so what we do in that case the proper training would be after re whatever uh, place you take that mir from i would suggest that you keep uh, your index finger in an operational note operational note what i mean by operational is for example you have shuddha ga over here so the way you're playing the notes that you're using are, are all shuddha or natural notes in that case i would suggest that even though it might seem like it's easier and you get more leverage if you put your index finger right before the shuddha ga which is in the komal ga it's going to cause you trouble later because uh, when you are going to play rags that don't have komal ga but has a shuddha ga instead and you need to make a phrase where you return to re you're going to notice that you just don't have that ability so we don't want that to happen so you keep your hand uh, after re for mirs you keep your index finger right on the immediate previous uh, operational note so in this case i have shuddha re my index on the shuddha re and then I have my middle finger on the uh, Shuddha Ga. So in that case, we play Ga Ma Pa, which is, by the way, a very important uh, mid in terms of sitar. We are going to come into that later. So. <laughs> you can play all the way till gamma pa over here but it might you might find that your means work best in the sa to ga or pa region and after pa it becomes substantially more difficult the reason why that happens is there is a resistive force right here the bridge and there is another resistive force right here the second bridge so since it's holding the strings in place the more closer you get the more resistance you're going to get and it's going to be more difficult but that's just for the beginners after a few months you're going to you're not going to you're barely going to notice any difference because of the tolerance and better technique that you're going to achieve so this practice is very very important for the practice that we are uh, going to uh, do in the uh, very near future i hope these lessons are really working out for you i hope that your sitar learning journey is getting easier day by day that's it for today. See you on the next class. Take care.